Warning, incoming goblin. Warning, incoming game. You get it, it's, it's a reboot reference. This video is sponsored by Cool Stuff Inc. With free weekly content and free shipping on orders over $150, you can save 5% site-wide by using the promo code MTGMUDSTA. If you're looking for a direct way to help the channel, please consider joining my Patreon and becoming a member of the generic goblin gang. Hey gang and welcome back. Today, Nick, Max, and MJ join me for a sweet game. Nick has built the Raven Man and keeps Myriad Landscape, Cryptovagadim, Felwar Stone, Ashnot Altar, Underworld Connection, Damnation, and Rankle. Max is trying out Ixil again, having tweaked it a little bit, and keeps Command Tower, Exotic Orchard, Tainted Wood, Karn's Bastion, Plague Stinger, Burying Corruptor, and a Grafted Exoskeleton. MJ has built Kethic, Crucible Golem, and is keeping an Arcane Signet, two Snow-Covered Mountains, a Snow-Covered Swamp, Solemn Simulacrum, Mahadi, Emporium Master, and Power Word Kill. I'm playing my Mistform Ultimus deck, keeping Swiftfoot Boots, two Islands, Seafloor Oracle, Robo the Ash Magi, and Imprisoned in the Moon. Nick wins the die roll and starts us off. Nick plays a Tap Myriad Landscape. Max plays a Command Tower. MJ just plays a snow-covered mountain and passes. I play a tap Path of Ancestry and we move to turn 2. Nick's got a tapped Crypt of Agadim and is in no rush and passes. Max plays out an Exotic Orchard and casts a turn 2 Plague Stinger. MJ has a snow-covered swamp for turn and casts an Arcane Signet. I play an island and pay two for Swiftfoot Boots. Nick plays a tap Polluted Mire and then pays two mana for a Felwar Stone. Max has a Tainted Wood as his land for turn and then taps three for a Viridian Corruptor. As it enters, he blows up my boots. He then moves to combat, swinging the Stinger at MJ for one infect damage. MJ plays a snow-covered mountain and pays 4 mana for a Solemn Simulacrum. As it enters, they get to find a basic for the field which comes in tapped and they pass to me. I just play a tap Myriad Landscape and pass. Nick plays a Thespian Stage for his land drop and pays enough mana for the Raven Man. He then casts a Glass Cast Heart which I'd never seen before and passes. Max untaps and draws. He goes to combat and swings everything at Nick to try and infect him. Nick blocks the Corruptor with his commander, but still takes one from the Stinger. Max then plays a Karn's Bastion and taps four mana for a Venomous Brutalizer. He doesn't have the mana for the ETB effect and has to pass. MJ plays a Haunted Ridge as their land for turn and then casts a Blood Artist, and then their commander, Kethic. They swing the Solemn Simulacrum at me, and deal two, and then pass through their phases to their end step. They get their commander's ability, and they sacrifice the sad robot to it. They draw as it dies, and then reveal until they hit a Fleshbag Marauder, putting it to the field. We then off to sacrifice a creature, and with the artist seeing these creatures dying, MJ drains each opponent for one, while they gain three. I play an island for turn, and just cast a Rhystic Study, and pass. Nick's got a Swamp for turn, and enchants the Swamp with an Underworld Connections, making sure to pay the 1 for the Study. Max goes to combat, and hits me with the Venomous Brutalizer. I take 3, and also gain 3 Infect. Max then casts Ixel, paying the one for my study, and passes through his phases. During his end step, he exiles my top card to his commander's ability. MJ's turn is pretty quick, as they play a snow-covered mountain, and then cast Felden. They pay the one, and pass after that. I play an island, and having drawn nothing from the Rhystic study, decide to just crack the myriad landscape, and pass my turn. During my end step, Nick uses the connections to lose one and draw a card, 
and also activates his heart to lose one and make a vampire token. Nick plays a swamp for turn and swings the lifelink token at me for one. He makes a blood token from the on attack trigger from the glass cast heart and then deals one and gains one. He then recasts the Raven Man, paying the one for the study and passing. Max plays my stolen island as his land for turn, which is kind of rude, and brings out a Norn's Choir Master, paying the one for the study, which is even ruder. He then moves to combat and swings the Brutalizer at Nick and Ixil at MJ. With Ixil attacking, the Choir Master gets to proliferate all of Max's opponent's infects counters. Both MJ and Nick then take the hits, gaining even more poison counters. Max then passes, and during his end step, each of his opponents exile their top cards. MJ plays a snow-covered mountain, and casts Mahadi Emporium Master. They then activate Felden to make a Solemn Simulacrum token, and go to find another tap basic to the field. Nick also uses this as a chance to crack his blood token, discarding a card and drawing a card. Going to combat, the Solemn swings at me and deals two. Moving to their end step, MJ sacrifices it to Kethic, drawing a card from the Solemn dying and then revealing until they hit a Zulaport Cutthroat. They drain Max for one with a Blood Artist trigger and pass. At the end of turn, Nick gets to make a Raven token as well from the Raven Man. I cast Imprisoned in the Moon onto Ixil to stop messing with my top deck, and then cast a Lord of Atlantis. I then announce that I'm passing turn. Before leaving my second main phase, Nick cycles a card to make a Raven before moving to my end step. He also loses one to the connections to draw a card. Nick draws for turn and plays a Swamp. He taps enough mana for the Immortal Sun, and then swings the Lifelink Vampire at me for two this time, and two Ravens at MJ. All of the creatures hit, with Nick gaining two life, plus makes a blood token. He passes after that. Max plays yet another stolen land with a snow-covered mountain, and then casts Mortify and targets my Imprisoned in the Moon. I save it with a Swan Song, and Max gets a Bird Token. Max then casts my Stolen Venser, bouncing the Imprisoned in the Moon anyway. He goes to combat and swings the Brutalizer at Nick and Ixil at MJ. This has the Choir Master proliferating again, and we all gain another poison counter. They then both take the hits, gaining even more poison. Max then passes, and we exile our top cards. MJ draws for turn and plays a Mana Crypt. In response, Nick cycles a Baron Moor to trigger Raven Man at the end of turn. MJ then plays and cracks a Bloodstained Mire to go and find a Snow-Covered Swamp. MJ then casts Perforos, and once the god is resolved, casts a Plague Crafter. They don't pay the one and I finally get to draw a card, and with the creature then entering, we all take two from Perforos, and then everyone has to sacrifice a creature. This has us getting drained by the Zulaport for one, and then MJ has the artist drain Max for all of the triggers that it sees. MJ then uses Felden to bring back the Plague Crafter again, dealing two to us again, and draining us each for one with Zulaport Cutthroat as they sacrifice it once more. This time they have the Blood Artist triggers go on each of us, and they each drain us for one. MJ then passes, and during their end step, boldly sacrifice the Perforos to Kethic, and reveal for a good long while until they hit a Lightning Skelemental, which is just such a fun name. We also get drained further from the Artist and Cutthroats, and MJ makes some treasures at their end of turn for Mahadi, while Nick remembers to make a Raven token. I play a Seed of the Synod and cast Wizard Class. I then bring out Robe of the Arch Magi and pass my turn. During my end step, MJ has to sacrifice the Skelemental, and Nick uses his Underworld Connections to draw a card and lose one, and we then get drained for the Zulaport Cutthroat and Blood Artist triggers. 
Nick draws for turn and then draws from the Immortal Sun. He plays a Swamp for turn and swings the Raven at MJ, while the Raven Man and Lifelink Vampire go at me. We take the hits, and once combat is done, Nick casts a Damnation in his second main phase to wipe the board. There are a bunch of drains coming from MJ at this point, and they stack the triggers so that all of their opponents end up below 20 while they sit at a comfy 63. Nick then plays out Faith of the Devoted and passes. Max plays a Canopy Vista which comes in untapped, but changes his mind for a tapped Cross and Verge. He then recasts his commander and passes, which has each of his opponents exiling their top card at the end of turn. MJ passes their Mana Crypt Flip, and then recasts Kethic. They then bring out a young Necromancer, and exile two cards from their graveyard as it enters, to return to Field Perforos. MJ then plays out Drana the Last Blood Chief, and each opponent takes two from Perforos. Moving to their end step, they sacrifice the Necromancer at the end of turn to Kethic, and reveal until they hit Anger. With Anger coming in, it deals two more to each opponent from Perforos. I draw and play a Seafloor Oracle. I then cast a Phantasmal Image as a copy of Kethic and move to my end step. I sacrifice the Oracle and reveal until I hit an Amoeboid Changeling. Hey. <laughs> My beautiful boy. <laughs> what were you looking for out of curiosity? Anything. I see. Anything. Gotcha. Literally anything. Um, not a me boy changely, mind you. Mm. At the end of turn, Nick cycles an undead gladiator and pays the one for faith of the devoted trigger, having each opponent lose two while he gains two. He then also loses one to the glass heart again to make another token. Nick draws two for his turn thanks to the Immortal Sun, and plays a Bajuka Bog as his land for turn, and exiles MJ's graveyard. He then swings the lifelink vampire at MJ, gaining some life and making a blood token. Nick then plays out a Restless Bloodseeker, and passes, making another blood token at the end of turn. Max draws and is in a tough position, and needs to decide who is a bigger threat. MJ or Nick. He taps enough to cast the stolen Zealous Conscripts and steals Drana from MJ. Going to combat, Ixel goes at MJ and Drana goes at Nick. Nick gets to pick what Max brings back from the Drana trigger and he gives Max the Venomous Brutalizer. With that entering, Max pays the mana needed to proliferate. This means MJ will get taken out with poison damage once Ixel connects, and then Nick takes 4 from Drana. Max then loses the conscripts and Drana as MJ has gone from the game, and at the end of turn, he exiles the top card from Nick and I's library. I untap and draw. I play an island and cast Defiler of Dreams, scrying one thanks to the path. I then re-enchant Ixel with the Imprisoned in the Moon, drawing from the Defiler. With not much else, I move to my end of turn, and decide to pass without sacrificing anything. At the end of turn, Nick uses a Blood Token to discard from under the floorboards, and casts it for its madness cost. He puts 6 into the X, gaining 6 life, and making 6 2-2 zombies. Nick draws his two, and then basic land cycles on Ash Barons, paying for the faith cost, and drains us for two. He then activates a blood token to discard a card, and drains us again for two with the faith trigger, taking me out. This also puts Max to lethal range with the zombie tokens, and Max scoops it up to Nick knowing that he's done. Game review time. So this was a spicy one with three Frexian legendaries and the Raven Man. Unfortunately for me, my Frexian commander didn't do a whole heck of a lot, and everyone paid the Rhystic Study Tax, which was just kind of a bummer. I think the most impactful thing I did was use Imprisoned on the Moon on Ixel, and then Max even got to use my own spell to bounce it back to my hand, which was just insult to injury. 
I was actually pretty impressed with how consistently Max was able to get people infected, and that Venomous Brutalizer really did a lot of work. There was a lot of proliferate effects in the deck, and it definitely made the deck function a lot better, since it meant most of his opponents had three poison counters early on in the game, and he was able to start stealing cards. MJ's Kithic deck was a midnight build, and we saw some of that as a result. They kind of threw together a lot of cards they thought were just kind of fun in Rakdos, and all things considered, it functioned really well. There was a lot of drain effects, and that Perforos was brutal. I'm surprised they sacrificed it to the Kethic trigger at the end of one of their turns. I was very surprised with how well the Raven Man performed, and it seemed like Nick had a consistent way of getting a Black Bird at the end of each turn. The Blood Token synergized so well with his commander, and that Glass Cast Heart seems like a really strong card, and one that I'm really sad that I've missed. This video wouldn't be possible without the help from my sponsors, Cool Stuff Inc., Multizone, Original Magic Art, and Alter Sleeves. But it definitely wouldn't be possible without the help from you, the viewers, and my patrons. So I just want to say thank you for watching, and to remember, friends are just opponents you haven't eliminated yet.